Welcome to this week's episode of Humans in Five. As people who participate in scientific and academic communities, we spend a lot of time writing. We write both short submissions for conferences, but also longer journal articles and book chapters. Once we write up these longer papers, they get sent around for peer review. Peer review is a process that is key to everyone engaging in research. It's been done in one form or another since about the 1600s. In this process, a paper submitted for publication is circulated to at least two recognized experts in the field. These two readers evaluate the quality of the paper, the types of data used, and how conclusions were reached. A paper is generally not recognized as accurate unless it's been through the peer review process. For example, when we discuss studies in our various episodes, we rely heavily on the peer review process to filter out the suspect papers, especially in fields where we aren't experts. Peer review is so central to research, but it can be done in a couple of ways. The authors never know who's reading their work, but there are two scenarios for the experts evaluating research. In a single blind review, the experts evaluating the paper know who wrote it and know where the institution was that the writer works. However, in double blind reviews, the experts have no idea who wrote the paper. Some journals use single blind review, whilst others use double blind review. So long as the reviewers are being fair, does it really matter which type of review was used? Some researchers at Google and Tsinghua University in Beijing were curious to see if single blind or double blind review made any difference in the types of papers that were selected. Their results, which were published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, throw a major curveball to the idea that all types of review are basically the same. They found that single blind reviewers, as in those who can see who wrote the paper and where they work, were significantly more likely to select papers from famous authors, top universities, and top companies more than their double blind counterparts. These biases have been noticed before. For example, researchers noted the Matthew effect, which shows that already famous researchers tend to receive the most recognition and congratulations on a new paper, regardless of the amount of work they did on that paper. The same holds for famous institutions. Bigger universities, as well as older, more prestigious institutions, tend to have a lot of papers as reviewers bias towards these well-known places. This works against smaller or newer universities, which might have great research, but have a harder time sharing it since reviewers don't know who they are. People have also noted the Matilda effect. With this form of bias, papers with male first authors are often ranked higher or considered more worthy than papers with female first authors. With all these biases occurring when reviewers know who wrote the paper and where they work, it's pretty likely that the papers with the biggest names from the most famed institutions may be getting a leg up, even if other people are producing similar, if not better, work. So if these biases are all in place with single blind review, why don't more journals use double blind review? In a lot of scientific fields, double blind review just isn't feasible. There are often very few researchers with a specific expertise. People can often figure out who wrote a paper, even if the name isn't made available. The authors of this particular study encourage journal editors and conference organizers to consider double blind review to avoid these issues. In the meantime, if you notice a study from a smaller university or someone you've never heard of sounds interesting, give them a fair shake when doing your own personal review. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Humans in 5. And don't forget to subscribe.